Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for being here today. The topic is going to be 10 life tips. These are tips that are very random. They're all over the place. And I'll share with you what inspired me to, to do this, this video and, and, and talk on this particular topic. Over the past several months, I have witnessed and observed different things that either remind me of what not to do or just something that I see as a little bit of a faux pas. We all encounter this, it's perfectly natural. We also are guilty at times of being the culprit, right? And we have to understand that we all have a different opinion on what is proper and what is not. So when I share these 10 random tips today, understand that you may see differently. You may not agree with me and that is okay. That does not mean that you're wrong and it doesn't mean that I'm wrong. I am right for how I see things in my filter and lens and you are correct and right in how you see things as well. One thing about challenging other people is you will never see a refined, civilized, and classy lady or gentleman challenge someone else on what their view or perspective is. It's really gotten very popular, very, very popular to challenge one another. And although that is not one of the 10 tips today, that right there is a tip in itself. Do not challenge other people when they just simply have a different opinion or a different perspective or see things differently. Uh, those type of people often get on our nerves, they get under our skin. I encounter some of this once in a while myself. And often I see that it comes from a person who does it all the time by nature. And often it's all about just always being right. So I am not here today to be that person. I would never challenge someone if they saw things differently. But understand many people out there even women and men my age that have lived life are also curious at times on what other people think, but it's not really something we can typically ask someone, especially if we're seeing something that they could be doing that we see as a faux pas or something that's not really proper etiquette or manners. Please don't take offense to anything that I share today if you do see something differently. Again, this is really just my opinion. I am Tracy Hensel. I'm a certified professional coach and owner of Hensel Coaching and Consulting. I help people just like you optimize your life, whatever that looks like for you and in whatever areas you choose, whether it's time management, uh, creating systems and habits and getting a better lifestyle or healthier lifestyle, that is what I can help you with. You can learn more about me on my personal brand website as well as my coaching and consulting website. So again, these are gonna be random and all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason. These are just things that I've witnessed and observed, and again, you may disagree. The most recent faux pas, this is the first one, and, and these are not in, in like an order of significance. Again, they're all over the place. But just this past week, I witnessed this and it definitely is something that I don't think most people realize, but chewing gum when talking to someone, I would recommend you don't do it. Believe it or not, even if you push that piece of gum over to the side, the person you are speaking to can still see it. And this happened to me just this past week. I was at an appointment and a lady was talking to me and she had a piece of gum in her mouth and all I could see was that little green piece of gum. I haven't chewed gum in years. I used to and that is the reason that I quit. So it's probably been maybe five or six years since I've had a piece of gum. Now I understand some people chew gum to freshen their breath and that's fine, just make sure that you're not doing it when you're in a public setting or when you could potentially be speaking to someone. 
Now understand, if you're on your way home from work and you're chewing a piece of gum and you need to stop at the grocery store to pick up a couple of items, you may continue to chew that piece of gum. But if you run into someone in the grocery store and you talk to them, they're going to see it and it is not a pretty sight. So I highly recommend if you want to step up your game, either eliminate chewing gum altogether like I have, or just be very careful when you are chewing gum and never in conversation with anyone. Tip number two of something that I witnessed and observed recently, and this was really only through photos, I was not at the event, but a black tie wedding reception or black tie event does not mean all the ladies need to wear black. <laughs> it just means that you wear a formal dress. Now, I know most ladies default to black. And I have shared with you before that be careful with wearing a lot of black because it can be viewed as you're trying to hide behind your extra weight. That's not always the case, so don't take offense. I absolutely love my black clothing and I love to dress up in black, but black can be overdone. I rarely wear black to a wedding reception because I know most ladies will be wearing black. And if I'm going to spend the money on a nice dress, I don't want it to just blend in with the crowd. But I recently saw some photos of a black tie wedding and I couldn't believe how many of the women we're wearing black. So just remember black tie does not mean black dress. It just means formal dress. Number three, I've witnessed this on more than one occasion. Do not re-gift a present or gift that was given to you unless you're very skillful. Uh, I recently had someone reach out to me on Instagram stories and she shared with me that she's just having a really hard time getting past the fact that she was recently re-gifted. She was gifted a gift. <laughs> she was gifted a gift. Okay, she was gifted a present, a gift, that she actually gave, gave to the person. So it was re-gifted and circled back to her. So be very careful with re-gifting. I know a lot of people do it. I am not going to lie. I have re-gifted, not gifts I've received, but I have re-gifted products or items that have been sent to me. L'Occitane is, is so generous and they send me a beautiful box every single holiday and it's just packed full of beautiful gift baskets and gift gift assortments. I re-gift those, but I always tell the person I'm gifting it to that this was sent to me and I got like a PR box and I wanted to share these products. Whenever I am gifting something that I didn't purchase myself, I always let the recipient know because I also wouldn't want them to think that I spent more than I did. So I may give them a gift and give that with them. I recently gave like an $80 skincare product as a gift and I would hate for that re recipient to search on the website and see how much that was and think that I spent that kind of money on them. So I always communicate. But if a gift is given to me, typically I don't re-gift it because you never know when someone is gonna see that happen. But I have witnessed this myself where someone has gifted a person a gift that that person gave to them. So be very careful in re-gifting. Tip number four, this happened to me this summer. And again, let me just say this. People don't mean harm. They don't mean ill intent when they do things. And we have to understand that most often. You will know. But be willing to give grace when people just don't know. But if, if you are invited to something, whether it's a formal invite or it's a Facebook invite or a text message invite, and you are asked to bring a dish to pass, or if anyone would like to make a food contribution, it would be greatly appreciated, which is the invite that I sent out. Don't wait until the day of. 
and, and respond and say, I'm going to bring this. This happened to me this year. And again, the person probably, I'm sure the person meant no harm. They probably felt really good about what they were bringing. But I was hosting a party and I had a Facebook invite go out and I had put in there, I would really, I'm gonna, I, basically I said, I'm covering the desserts and the drinks. If I could get everyone else to contribute an appetizer of some sort, I would greatly appreciate it. Please let me know as soon as possible so I can plan. I didn't get a great reply. So about a week out, I sent out another little post on that Facebook event reminding everyone of details of the party and updating them on any new details. And I put in there, please let me know if you can bring an appetizer. Please let me know as soon as possible is probably what I put. Because I know not everyone's timely. I didn't get a great reply, so guess what I did? I got all the appetizers or made them. A couple of hours prior to the party, I get a text message or reply on the Facebook page I'm planning on bringing cheese and crackers. Well, I already had that covered because no one communicated to me. So to me, that's a faux pas and it's just a respect. I would say better not to bring anything than to, br to say something last minute. Reply right away with what you're gonna bring because that really helps the host. And of course, I do give grace because I know a lot of people don't entertain or host and I'm greatly experienced in hosting and entertaining. So I see a lot of faux pas in this department. And again, you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't have experience, it's easy to think, what's the big deal? And while maybe to you it's not a big deal, I'd be willing to bet you don't host or entertain. Any of you who host or entertain are, are entertain are saying to yourself, yeah, I need to know these things because I need to plan. So very important, and that's tip number four. Tip number five, don't ever purchase someone, a loved one or a friend, an item from a garage sale or estate sale unless you've gotten the okay. So let's just say you're a thrifter and you see something that you think someone could use. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, but you're kind of putting them on the spot. So it's best to take a picture and send it to them and say, hey, listen, I stumbled across this item at a garage sale or a thrift shop or an estate sale. Do you think you could use this? Always get permission back because if you're expecting them to pay for the item, um, they may not be interested in that item. Also, if you purchase it and you don't expect them to pay for the item, they may feel guilty if they don't use the item. So don't ever, don't ever purchase something that's used for someone else unless you've gotten permission. And really another kind of bridge off of this is, and this has happened to me, don't ever take a plant or something to someone's house and just say, hey, I'm going to Florida for the winter. I thought maybe you could, you could water my plant for me. This happened to me one time where I was, a plant was brought to me to take care of <laughs> during the winter season when, when some loved ones were gonna be gone. And <laughs> I thought, you don't want me taking care of your plant. You, you may not come back to your plant. So don't ever put someone on the spot like that. Also, if you're going to be leaving, let's say for the winter, because people will be doing that pretty soon, don't clean out your pantry in your refrigerator and go give that food to someone unless you've asked and gotten the green light. They really don't, a lot of people may not want your canned goods and your, your, your bottle of ketchup and your bottle of mayonnaise that you did not finish using. Get, get permission first. Ask if they would be willing to take the groceries that, that aren't gonna get used and they don't wanna see them go to waste. So it's just a respect thing. And again, you may disagree with this. You may think you're doing something really nice. It's not uncommon where people will think they're doing something nice, but really what they're doing is kind of tacky and it's really not proper manners or etiquette. So it never hurts to communicate. Communication can eliminate a lot of problems. It really can. But a lot of people think communication is confrontation. It's not. They're two separate things. You can always search it. 
on the search engine. Actually, I just looked at my tip page and that was actually another tip. So I just checked off two boxes. Here's a big one, and this recently was presented to me by a client. Addressing people by their name. Always address people by their name unless they tell you otherwise. So even if they have a name that most often is shortened, okay, to a shorter name, I'll give an example. I have a client, his name is Matthew. I don't ever call him Matt. Every email that he has sent to me, he always addresses it with Matthew. Also, when he filled out his intake form, it says Matthew. I'm not going to call him Matt. Now I have another client whose name is Jacob. And in our very first session, that's how I addressed him because the intake form said Jacob. But he told me, to refer to him or call him Jake, and that's what I call him. And whenever we email back and forth, he always ends it with Jake, so I've had permission. I have a client, her name is Patricia. That is her birth name. But she has always went by Trish, that's her preference. She works with a lady who calls her Pat, yeah. Yes, I know. I'm thinking the same thing. Are you kidding me? And I can see where someone may shorten the name Patricia to Pat. But the problem is Trish didn't give her that permission to call her that. I also know someone who's named Robert. Now, we know that a lot of Roberts are Bob or Rob. This particular Robert goes by Robert. So it's very important that we always call people by their first name unless they have told us and given us the green light to shorten the name or call them something else. And I'm just going to add this in here real quick too. If you are ever texting someone, let's say someone that you work with, Always say who it's coming from. We don't know, and I have shared this in a video before. I have a video on texting. Uh, we don't know if someone has you programmed in or they don't have you programmed in. I don't program all of my clients into my phone. If you're not doing a life overhaul with 24 sessions and we're going to be working together for probably 12 months or more, I may not program you in my phone. So if you reach out to me and text me because you do have my number, because often that's what I call on is my number. So if you're gonna see it and you may program it in, I don't know who's reaching out to me if they say, hey Tracy, uh, can I cancel next week's appointment and move it to the following week? Who is this? I have no idea. It happens all the time. I have had family members share with me that that happens and they get really annoyed. Well, it's just not proper. It's really not professional. So be very careful with that. This is a big one and so hard for people to do. Uh, some of the most, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I mean, some of the greatest people that I know still have a bad habit of doing this. And I'm sure I've done it as well. I'm sure I don't, I, I know it's not a bad habit for me. And this really is just a bad habit, what I'm going to share. And I'm sure if I did it, it was way back in the day and I'm so happy that I self-corrected. But please self-correct in what I'm about to share because it is, it, 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 this one drives me a little bonkers. <laughs> not going to lie. So many of you will probably see yourself in this. So this is a great one to share. And again, you may disagree, but for me, this is a heavy hitter. Never tell someone not to shop somewhere, eat somewhere, use a particular doctor, use a particular veterinarian, go to a specific daycare, have your child have a certain teacher, based on your experience. Did you hear me? Based on your experience. A refined, civilized, and classy lady or gentleman would know better. Yes, you heard me right. They would know better. I hear this all the time. And I'll tell you what, 
I'll tell you what, my perception goes down right away. If they don't ask your opinion, don't chime in and say, oh my gosh, don't go to that restaurant. We had the worst experience. Number one, the wait staff this, and then the food was cold, and blah, 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 is what it sounds like. I'm just saying, I know. Many of you right now are going, oh, I have such a bad habit of doing this. Just because you've had a bad experience doesn't mean that they will. So the proper thing to say, well, first of all, W-A-I-T, why am I talking if no one asked your opinion? If someone shared, yeah, we're going to go to uh, this place to look at um, new windows for the house. Oh, don't, I wouldn't go there. Oh, I wouldn't go there. You, you don't chime that in. They didn't ask your opinion. They didn't ask your opinion. Zip it. Take a chill pill. <laughs> Zip it, right? Okay, if they didn't ask first, W-A-I-T, why am I talking? If they say, if they, if they share, yeah, we're going to that new restaurant. Did you hear there's a new restaurant in town? We're going to go try it. Yeah, we had a bad experience, right? You're chiming in. Instead, if they say, have you tried it? And maybe you did have a bad experience. Your reply back would be, actually, we did. We have tried it, and we didn't have a good experience, but that's not to say that you won't. So now they know that, hmm, you had a bad experience. You're not telling me not to try it. This is what people do. They literally will tell you, don't go there. Don't try that place. No. No. Mm-mm. -mm. Not classy, not classy at all. A lot of people are guilty of this. Okay. Yeah, we were, yeah, I'm gonna buy a car over here. Oh, I wouldn't go to that, I wouldn't go to that dealership. Oh my gosh, they're terrible. No, mm-mm, mm-mm, not classy, not classy. If they ask, have you ever purchased a car from that dealership and, and who did you use? I had a bad experience there. But that doesn't mean that you won't. It's kind of like people reach out to me all the time. Tracy, would you recommend this? Would you recommend that? I don't know. I don't know. Did you have a good experience with this? If I say, actually, I didn't have a good experience with that or I didn't have results, but that's not to say that you won't. I would hate to see someone, one of my clients, not try a diet because someone else had a bad experience. Well, their bad experience is because they didn't show up for the diet. The diet works. The person sharing doesn't, okay? So that's a big one. That's a big one, and it's a habit. It's a bad, bad habit. You're also not really listening. You're not listening with intent. Your wheels start spinning the minute they share they're going to try the restaurant that you didn't have a great experience at, and you're really not even listening. Listen. Okay, listen. Okay. Yeah, big one. Here's another one that's just a habit. Be careful saying, I know what you're going through, or, or I've had the same thing happen. No, you don't know what they're feeling. No, you don't know what they're going through. Again, it goes back to you're not listening. You're jumping, you're, you're jumping out of your box into their box. If someone has a loss, and you've had a loss before, we all have, you don't tell them, Man, I, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're feeling. Well, maybe you've had a loss and they've had a loss, but you actually don't know what they're feeling. You don't know what they're going through, and you're actually taking away from them what they're feeling by making it about you. So while you think you're being kind and polite, and I'm sure some of you are disagreeing with me right now or, Q, or taking it personally, QTIP, quit taking it personally, you can have a different opinion. You are right and I am right. But I find it to be very unfortunate when people do that. You may find it comforting, but if you're on the receiving end, I, I'd question that. Because their story and their loss is real for them. 
and you're taking it away by saying you've been through it you've done this if they ask wow have you ever have you ever lost a parent have you ever lost this it's different yeah and you'll get through the days will get easier okay but acknowledge and validate what they're going through not what you went through okay yeah, something to think about because again, it's just a bad habit. It's kind of like going to a funeral home and telling the person's loved one they're in a better place. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No, they're not. <laughs> we all know that yes, they may be in a better place, but that doesn't that doesn't comfort someone. That does not comfort someone because at that time they may not see it that way. If I lost a child, and someone told me they're in a better place, in that moment, I'm not gonna feel that way. No, they belong here with me. They belong here with me. So you're, you're taking away what they're feeling. Acknowledge and validate, A-V. A for acknowledge, V for validate. Acknowledge and validate what someone's feeling. Okay, that's what people should be doing. They're in a better place. It's a cliche thing to say. I, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard it said by someone with me, and I'm like, don't, no, 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 that's not what you say. Because a lot of times we don't know what to say. Zip it, W-A-I-T. You don't have to say anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. Please let me know what I can do for you. How can I help? How can I be there for you? But do not ever tell anyone they're in a better place. If they say it, that's okay. You shouldn't be the one saying it. This is one that a lot of you are going to disagree, but mother of five, I bear a little weight here, but I'm not here to challenge. You can see things however you want. When buying a baby or a toddler clothing, pajamas, clothing, anything, do not buy a bigger size. No. <laughs> If they're 12 months, they're 12 months. <laughs> they're not 18 months. They're not 24 months. This was such a pet peeve of mine when I had my children. And I actually believe it's more of a generational thing. Maybe back when my mom had children um, and, and maybe your mom had children, that was what they did. No, no. I've had five children. All five of my girls wore the exact size that they were, or even a little lighter. So when my, when my daughters turned one, they were still wearing their nine months, okay? They were always right in the, in, the, in the middle of the percentile. Most children are. Now, I get it. One person out there is watching and saying, oh, no, not my kid. We know. We know. But when you take your baby or toddler to the doctor, they tell you what percentile they're in. So, yes, it would make sense if they're on the higher end of the percentile, they're going to need bigger clothes. But most babies and toddlers, if you go by percentile, are exactly where they should be. So quit buying bigger clothes. Also pay attention to the season, okay? So I'll give an example. June, my granddaughter, turned one in May. If you're going to buy her summer clothes because her birthday was in May, you would buy 12 months so that she can wear them for the summer. You don't buy her summer clothes that are 18 or 24 months. Well, you could. The 24 months will fit her next year, and actually probably the 18 months will as well. But if your intent is that June is going to wear the bathing suit, the pajamas, the cute little bubble romper that you got her this summer, this, right after she turns one, you buy 12 months. You don't buy bigger. Now, if you were going to buy her winter clothes for her first birthday in May, then you may consider 12 to 18 months, which often is a size, but be careful, be careful. The other thing is babies and toddlers are adorable when they wear clothes that fit them. There's nothing more tacky than anyone. Adults and children and babies and toddlers wearing clothes that are too big. I see this and I'm like, no, no, they don't even, they, it takes their cuteness factor away. So buy the size they are unless you're buying for the next season. And if you are, do the math or ask. 
<laughs> communicate. I know it's so hard for so many people to do communicate. Reach out to the mom. I'm thinking about purchasing clothes for winter. What size do you think she would wear? Mom will be happy to give you that answer. And I will share, Kirsten has gotten a taste of this herself where she has clothes that June will never wear because the season doesn't fall into the size that she will be. Because I don't know who they're buying for. I don't know who they're buying for, right? So by the age that they are, if you know someone has a bruiser of a baby or a toddler, because they're out there, ask the mom or in that case, but if you don't know, ask the mom. If you see the child and you can tell that they look the size that they are, or sometimes they may be a little small. I had a couple that were always more like the 30th or 20th percentile, so they were on the smaller side, but most of them wear what their age is, or often they can still wear clothes that they've, that, that's a little bit behind, right? And they look adorable in those clothes. So there you go. I think that's everything. 10 just random tips that some of you are probably a little guilty of and not going to say I'm not guilty of things as well, but these are things that I've witnessed and observed over the past several months. If you like this video and would like me to continue to take notes, so what I do is as I see something, I brain dump it into a document. If you'd like me to continue to do videos like this, please let me know in the comment section below. I can start today paying attention to anything that I see that can help you. I have many viewers that don't have their mom and they are so grateful when I share these things that they may not know. I have clients, high quality, high caliber, successful women my age that still want to know these things because maybe they were never taught or they're just curious another person's perspective. So again, if you disagree, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm not perfect, but this is how I see it. This is my lens and filter. And if you enjoyed me sharing, please let me know. As always, outfit and beauty details will be linked in the description box below as well as on the corresponding blog post. And I generally share some videos that can complement today's video, but you can search anything. I have a video out there on all topics because I am a life coach and I talk on all areas of life. So thanks for sticking it through. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you being here. Be sure to um, give this video some love, share it with other people, and tell people about me. And I will see you soon in the next video. And be sure to be watching me on Instagram stories where I share topics just like this almost on the daily. Take care. <music>